and a chance to catch up with what happened in their lives. The single most important factor in the growth of Fun and Grail was the coal mine of Parlor D, or the Point of Air as it's known in English. Coal started to be mined here in the 1870s, but it wasn't until the 1880s that it really established itself. My father started working there at the age of 15 for a shilling a day, and in those days it was a six day week with long and arduous shifts. He spent his lifetime there. For two miserable years, I followed his footsteps underground when I worked there as a bevin boy at the end of World War II and hated every minute of it. This, the well, was the only source of water in the village until the mid-30s. There is a legend that there was a shipwreck once upon a time and the sailors were washed upon the shore and came across this well, this sort They're all linked through family ties and perhaps more importantly by their dependence on Point of Air. And <laughs> Lover. And a blue then nineteen twenty six at the Crazy. I can mirror that a worker and a poor law. I can no finier poor law. And come rake young. Mirror in a chair at the Connaught course. Jahanar Kant or Merlion's man bought in Laura and the Poor at the Connaught. Mir hoed rhaid i bob un oedd yn gofalu neu yn calyn o'r rhaid fawr fawr termau Cymraeg. Uh, supervision down pits, we were given pit ponies. So we'll go to the stable to get a pit pony, and then we used to speak to the horse, uh, gee up, turn round. The horse used to turn his head round, look at us, as if to say, well, what you saying? And then some of the old colleagues used to come to us and say, well, back then, you shall have come get a careful now. And then we used to say, well, what does that mean? If you didn't speak well to these pit ponies, they wouldn't move, they wouldn't move. And that's how I learned my Welsh was working with the pit phones on the pit here. I was born in Lancashire, and uh, it was hard to get a job there. And uh, I asked the under-manager from the point of air for a job, Mr Evans, you asked. And he said, well, how can I start you here if you can't speak Welsh? And I said, I can learn anything to get a job like. So, uh, Anyway, I got the job, I went down below, and uh, the fellas there were very good with me. Most of them wouldn't speak English, but uh, there was a fellow in particular, Edward Lloyd, he was a fireman, the, the boss. And uh, whenever I was stuck, he'd always help me out with a, a few words. And I managed to get along all right. And as the time went along, well, my Welsh did come a little bit better, but it's still far from being perfect. But I do reckon myself as a Welshman now, especially after being here 60 years. <laughs> well, this is the Garth. It follows a stream which runs out into the sea. And it is probably older than Fanangroyo itself. Oh, my God. 
I mean, this is my tenth year at this colony. I came from Manchester. And um, I was a bit apprehensive when I first came down here. And during the first 12 months, I was fairly miserable. But after that, I really settled down. And I, I got quite a lot of good friends here. And I found no friction at all. And I think this is proved by three years ago, I was elected the branch chairman of the, uh, of the pet. Miners all over the country, you know, are the same. Uh, this proved in the two strikes that we had, uh, 1972, 74, they say unity is strength. There's no difference between um, Scottish miners, English miners, Welsh miners. Um, the covenant ship is, is still there. If there's an explosion in, the, in England somewhere, or Scotland, say, we feel it. Uh, and I think it'd be the same if there was, and fact, if there was one here, that they'd feel the same. You feel as if you'd lost one of your brothers. I put the cards before the horse often. We speak English. We go for this a lot. Shall I come right? Do we? Do we? If the language die, I think we're we're dead. We're dead. That's my English. Isn't it? We also just finish if the language finish. I can't see it coming back like it was uh, 20 years, 23 years ago when I started here, when it was all Welsh. I feel saddened by it, you know, to, to tell you the truth. I, I do, I, I feel very sad about it, but uh, I can't see it coming back. Petition ...which opened up the village to outside influences. And given the nearness of England, these influences were overwhelmingly English. Oh, when I go back to Fulham Royal now, I hardly know a soul there. Because most of the people are, are strangers who have come in from England. But you've only got to look around the village to see that it is a dime. And Palor D. And we are now with him, Night Pushne with Tumnach and Narpasha and Mambodolath. Our moment at a seams, either Dan or High on Caliguisia and Bresino. I could go Sir Peril Honobe, the block with Arbeniquir, or any liquid pot and season. I could then be. Wedi Gorfan, when I the port now with the Angian Gary Levelain, the Tunnels, and he got a riant, a seams, and he went. I got Henny Kali, Oshonathan, he contracted. Henny, of course, and thought I are Beniquir, Henny and Sison, I can hear her. So he called Hill. As the sit a dear sit a red a yang, and that he may on a sit a roddy and dear radio. I can need an inig on in dear radio and a push and that in dear radio and a come dog a thicket. A heroic bod am reward on yon ma and got a cart trevy and a come dog a I go to the young body in the Lanuat no, and he bent round. I go to Hossi, he rada helatia. He reviewed Ariaith. I have it. The reviewed and a farth of view. Pretanu have it where Adela do it and a pentre, they are moinwer. I come here, I go to the Hana. And Hoshal Sesni. I got in Dillin and Nilth Goods, a couple with Club of that. Then I was an English Grivia. I the pen, Hannah, the Eighth Gamrak. The point of air and its miners found themselves in the throes of the often violent and bitter industrial struggles of the time, which culminated in the disastrous miners' strike of 1984 85. <laughs> Yeah. 
After their defeat, despite all their efforts, it was only a matter of time before a Paralukti was closed down, and in 1989, it happened. It's really hard to imagine here that there was a huge coal mine employing hundreds of men, the lifeblood of Fanangroyu, until just 18 years ago. And now, as you can see, absolutely nothing. Since that time, no single large employer has come to the area. And over the ensuing years, more and more local families have left to find work elsewhere. Alwyn Lloyd died in 2004, but with no suitable work available in the area, none of his three grown-up children have settled here. And by now, of course, the other two contributors have long since passed away. Looking back on it again, I'm 